On this episode of Aaron Reviews, we review the Marvel Select Disney Store exclusive Bleeding Edge Iron Man. Now, here we have the Bleeding Edge Iron Man. I really gotta say, I wasn't really expecting this guy. But, uh, I mean, I'm really excited to kind of crack him open and see what he's all about. Here we have the side of the box, and we have Iron Man doing the little flight pose in the Bleeding Edge armor suit. And I just hope the toy can live up to this artwork, man. And on the back of the box, nothing new. Just, uh, just a little picture there with a little blurred out diorama. And uh, believe it or not, there's no description on the back of the box. Here we have the base. It actually comes in two different pieces. This is the main piece, and you can actually take off this little wing deal. Or actually, when you open the box, it actually comes apart. So you can put it right in there closer look you can see there's a lot of little detail here there's a lot of dry brushing here you can see here on the wing if you look inside the wing you can see a lot of little mechanical dealies here that that looks kind of cool and right here on top this is actually where the peg holes are so this is where you would be placing Iron Man when you look at it on the table or anything like that it looks cool but when you pick it up it kind of it's it loses its luster you know it's it just ugh. But you know, of course, it's just meant to just be a stand. So I mean, I really can't complain too much. But it just kind of sucks that you know when you go over here to the side, see how it just like flat flattens out right here. It should have been kind of more 3D-ish. So here we have the Bleeding Edge Iron Man. At a closer look, you can kind of see that his face does have a little bit of detail. I'm really liking this head sculpt. It's a lot different from the movie figures. It's a little bit skinnier. It's not as bulky. So taking a good look at his helmet, he does have a little bit of white in his eyes and he has a little dark black outline which is pretty cool. He has a subtle little mouth here. That's kind of cool. But uh, I'm really liking the paint apps on this. One thing that I am noticing is that uh, I, I thought they probably would have sculpted just a slight shoulder pad but they just painted it. I mean there is a little something but I thought there probably would have been a little bit bigger than that. Um, you can see like these little lights here. So that's very consistent with the comics. On the back you see a lot more of these little diodes here and just a really clean neat paint job all together that gold and red. Down on the legs I really gotta say I, I do gotta comment on his feet. His feet do look kind of weird man. It looks like he's wearing some kind of moccasins or something like that. They look real small and pointy. In the way of head articulation his head does turn all the way around. He doesn't look down or up too much. Well he looks up slightly but not too much. So here's down, just looks straight, and when he looks up, that's it. As far as arm articulation goes, his arm does turn all the way around. Does hinge open, there's no bicep swivel, there is a double jointed elbow, and there's no forearm swivel or anything like that, but he does have a little bit of swivel on his uh, wrist here. You can actually take these out, by the way. As far as chest articulation, or ab articulation, or even a waist swivel, Iron Man is absent of all of those. He doesn't have anything as far as his torso, any kind of articulation on the, on the torso. The way of leg articulation, he can kick his leg up this high and he can move it back this far back. As far as splits, he doesn't go too far Van Damme style, but uh, that's pretty good for an Iron Man. He has double jointed knees, he has ankle articulation, and he has an ankle rocker. He also has peg holes at the bottom of his feet. This is what he looks like when he's on his base. So one thing I do want to mention is if you do opt to get this figure, you're going to need a lot of shelf space because this thing is massive when he's on his base. I mean, it just takes a lot of like head space or just just in general. So I really wouldn't see this like in your standard bookshelf or anything like that, unless it's on the top or on a tabletop or something like that. Though I'm not digging the base all too much. I really like the way it looks like on one of these flight stands that I got from Roland Raymond from Facebook. So at the end of the day, would I recommend this figure? Honestly, I would only recommend it to like an Iron Man fanatic or that guy that just has to have that Hall of Armor. I mean, as for me, I would pass on this figure from my personal collection. I mean, I just don't understand how, I don't know, it's, it just feels like a very simple figure but it's missing like some a certain amount of detail. It's it's hard for me to say or to put into words, but I mean, I don't know. I'm I'm hoping somebody actually feels the same way I do, but I mean, for example, it's missing the torso, like torso articulation, waist articulation. I mean, it does have double jointed knees. That's cool, but the feet look a little off to me. Like I said, he looks like he's wearing moccasins. They look really really thin. 
I mean, I don't know. I mean, for the most part, it looks cool, but if it just had just a little bit more detail as far as the arc reactor and, uh, you know, maybe a different base, I'd probably feel a little bit different about this. But, uh, again, you know, that's just one guy's opinion. So that being said, this is the Detailed Jackal, and uh, I want to thank you guys for watching another episode of Variant Reviews. Before you guys forget, hit the subscribe button, please.